Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to N5D Radio's Cosmic Awakening Show, where we are serving this galaxy and beyond. My name is Michelle Walling, and I'm with N5D.com, and our goal is to reach as many people as possible with a database of articles, videos, and radio shows that will help aid you in your spiritual awakening. At the Cosmic Awakening Show, we encourage you to question everything. I'd like to give a very special thanks to my sponsor, Greg Prescott from N5D.com, the world's hottest esoteric, metaphysical, and spiritual database on the Internet. Greg is also the webmaster for our sister site, BodyMindSoulSpirit.com. And I also have a website called CosmicStarseeds.com, where you can find all of the articles I have written and all of my radio shows, And you can find out about how to book a holistic life coach session with me at michellewalling.com. You can also find every episode of this show, the Cosmic Awakening Show, on the N5D iTunes page. And you may want to check out our new video series, N5D Network, on N5D's YouTube page. Just go to YouTube and type in N5D and find the main N5D channel. And uh, you'll find thousands and thousands of videos there. I created the website, howtoexitthematrix.com, for more of the esoteric studies of the paranormal and quantum aspects of our reality and the possibility that we exist in a matrix. And a special shout out to my Facebook friends tonight. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hello to all the Facebook groups. Thank you for allowing me to post my information about my shows and my articles in your in the groups. And hello to the billions and gazillions of our cosmic family out there in the universe listening tonight. Now, this week's topic is reporting on ascension waves. And our guest tonight is Diane Canfield. Diane is a psychic clairvoyant medium. This means that she's a clairvoyant and also a medium. She can access your loved ones who have crossed over to the next realm. She has all the clairs, but clairvoyance is her strongest one since she regularly sees things from other dimensions. This is her way her way of life day in and day out. And she offers psychic development classes to everyone online worldwide so that they too may open up their gifts and become the multidimensional star being that they are meant to be. Now, the beings that she she sees and communicates with uh, can be spirits of the departed. They could be orbs. And they could have messages from other dimensions and visions. Diane also has visitations from our star family in person and has been visited by many races. Diane started having these experiences as a child but had no support since her parents did not know what was happening. Psychic gifts regularly are passed down by the matriarchal line. And Diane is also an ascension expert. As we are experiencing a shift in consciousness, And she gives guidance in regards to this expansion also. And, of course, that is what our show tonight is going to focus on. And Diane has had a near ascension experience, you know, instead of a near-death experience, in May of 2013. So she knows what is involved in making this shift. Now, you can find more about Diane Canfield on her website, www.diane.com. Canfield, C-A-N-F-I-E-L-D dot com. And let's go ahead and get right into this. Diane, welcome to the Cosmic Awakening Show. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle, for having me on. Well, it's my pleasure, and I am very excited to help our listeners tonight uh, learn to 
feel the energy of the waves that are coming in. And you are a gifted psychic, and you have had um, a near ascension experience. And so um, I wanted to share that in a few minutes. Uh, but I'd like to start off our discussion, if you would please, by giving us your definition of what ascension is. Ascension is basically a shift into higher consciousness. And what we're doing is we're also transforming into our light body so that we can shift into the, you know, fifth dimension and beyond. And this has been going on for some time for, for many of us. You know, my own um, my own experience started in 2000. So, you know, people people may not realize that, you know, some of the things they experienced long ago were ascension related, but, but they, you know, for many of us, they have been. So um, we're expanding pretty, you know, rapidly the past few years. And I would say it really uh, um, hiked up around 2011. That's when, you know, the energy waves really started coming through intensely. And we started, we started shifting our consciousness into the higher dimension. Well, and I woke up about 2010, and um, I had a very serious ascension experience December 21st of 2012, where I believe that we had a high, uh, one of these big waves of ascension come through even though some people didn't feel it, um, I know it, it happened um, because I was in bed, could not move. I had flu-like ascension symptoms and lost a uh, feeling of gravity, things like that. Um, my, I was so achy I could hardly move. High, very high fever. I had a very large experience. And since then, um, oh, and by the way, before 2009, I had some uh, heart palpitations was the only yeah. thing that I really remember about ascension symptoms where I had anxiety attacks and, and heart palpitations. And I understand that the heart is trying to recalibrate with Earth's heartbeat. Is that correct? Yes, definitely, because of the um, you know, heightening. That's definitely mm -hmm. correct. And that's, you know, see, the thing is, is that when you – when you shift your consciousness, you're in a higher state of being, and everything vibrates at a faster rate. So everything has to speed up and go faster. So this is also why during my near ascension experience, I had a very hard time afterward coming back to 3D because I was vibrating so fast, and everything seems so slow here. So if you can imagine taking, like, drinking, like, 20 cups of coffee and having it just go on for like a two week period. That's, that's what I felt like afterwards. Oh, no wonder I have such a hard time getting up in the morning. I feel for the last, for most of my life more, I'm not a morning person for sure. <laughs> um, so listen, let's talk about that near ascension experience. Um, what was that like? And uh, what, what could people expect um to, did you actually go into a light body and then actually have to come back? Well, I started to go to the light body, and then it stopped right in the middle of that. I started going into that because I saw a lot of uh, orbs, golden orbs, all around me, and I started trans the transition process, and then in the middle of it, it suddenly stopped. But leading up to it, it was about a five-hour experience you know, this is what I also talk about. There wasn't any real alignments going on. There there was nothing really going on. This just came out of the blue. So, you know, our ascension can happen in any time. And nothing has to be aligned. No planets have to be aligned. There doesn't have to be anything else going on for it to happen. So um, it was about a five-hour experience. And it started out with intense pressure like kind of like what you talked about, um, and being weighed down and pressure around the head and the body, all the body feeling compressed and heavy and weighed down. And now when I mean intense, I don't mean just a light wave coming through. I mean like extreme, extreme, in, you know, intense where you can't, I couldn't move basically. It was, I did end up moving, but it was hard for me to move during that time. 
Mm-hmm. And then um, <clears throat> then one thing turned into another. Then I had the anxiety, like like what you mentioned you had. Then I had intense anxiety, which I don't ever get anxiety, so that was very odd for me because I, I never have anxiety. Then intense thirst, intense hunger, intense heart palpitations, and then that's when, and this lasted five hours, and then that's when I started turning into the light body. So now intense thirst, what I mean by that is was having to constantly drink water. And, I mean, drink a bottle of water, then have to go out and get another bottle of water. When that's done, get another bottle of water. Intense hunger, eat eat like a salad. Get done, go out there and eat a sandwich. Go out to the kitchen and make something else. It was it was extreme. It was as intense as you can, you know, imagine. Now, do you think that you had to eat to keep yourself grounded, to keep yourself in your body? Or else you, you, know, you might have just popped right out? That, yeah, that's possible. But, you know, I was just going along with what was happening, which is what I always advise everyone to do. In other words, whatever's happening, whatever you're feeling, just go with it and don't resist it. And just go with it and don't even overanalyze it. Don't analyze it. Just let everything go and just go with it and just go with it. So that's basically what I was doing. I was just letting it take take me over because if you start resisting, then everything shuts down and everything stops. Okay. That's good. Good information. Yeah. So and, how did did you, know, you feel just, a tingling all over your body? Um no, at that time, no, I didn't. But, of course, I've had that many other times, many mm-hmm. other times. In fact, that started for me in about, I'd say, 2000 and maybe seven, where I would have rushes of extreme tingling over the entire body that wouldn't stop, and it would go on for like <laughs> like 10 minutes. So, and then, and then I also would get that when I would listen to certain music, and that would also trigger it because, you know, music is is very connected, you know, also. So, yes. you know, you'd be, yeah, music is always connected. So I would al- also get that. And then I would have to be obsessively listening to certain songs over and over again or even certain, this, this is going to sound crazy, okay, but certain, like, uh, commercial-type jingles. And I would have to listen yes. to that music. <laughs> I would have to listen to that music, I mean, continuously for, like, hours at a time. Like, I was obsessed with it. I became obsessed with certain things. And that's all part of the, you know, process, too, is getting over it, letting it run through your body, run its course, and then getting through it, because that, that's what you need at that time. And then you're adapting to it. You're integrating it to your body. And then you can move past it finally. You know, that that went on for a few years, and then I finally was able to get past all that. Well, at the time of your near ascension uh, experience, um, what did it feel like when you almost turned into your light body? I would say that I everything, you know, all the heaviness out of me and everything dropped, and I felt like everything was speeding up. And then just as it started, it just basically started where I just, I saw all these golden orbs all around me, and I started feeling light, and then it suddenly stopped. And then I asked, you know, for some guidance afterward, like, what happened? And they said, no, you have to be here. You still have to be here because you have to talk about what you went through so that everybody will know what happened and how it's going to take place. Okay. All right. So, um, you had to come back, or you had to – actually, you didn't really go anywhere. You just vibrated yourself. Well, it, it was a spontaneous action that vibrated your yes. whole body. Yes. Now, did you have any roaring or whooshing sounds? No, not during that time, but I have had that – I've experienced that before. I've had experience with strange sounds, which are fifth-dimensional sounds, you know, as the fifth dimension opens up. We can hear these what's called strange noises. Okay. And as you know, um, it's been predicted that we were going to have this uh, big wave of energy come in. Um, Well, it's already been coming. We've had waves of energy for a very long time. You you have symptoms when you have, when these waves come and you've been reporting 
to um, people who follow you, you have specific symptoms that occur, been reporting as waves come and go, so that we can get an idea ourselves on how what's, what symptoms our bodies are having that are associated with that. So we can kind of follow along and maybe, you know, just be prepared. And, and if we're not uh, feeling anything, um, then I don't know what, I don't know what that means, but so everybody handles this differently. So what is, you know, that there's this wave that's here and um, it was um, prophesized, I guess, to come in yesterday. And so before yesterday, can you give the audience a little bit of idea of how fast these uh, waves were coming and what kind of things that you were feeling and what you feel when one of these waves of high frequency, high consciousness energy uh, comes over the planet. Yeah. Yes, I can. Um, the waves for September started coming in. Um, as I talked about on my website of uh, the fourth September 4th, 5th and 6th. And what it feels like when a wave comes in is, uh, it feels like a download. So you, you, it would feel like to the person that hasn't felt a wave. I guess it would kind of feel like a wave of of energy pushing on you, coming through you, and then going through your entire body, but then staying in your body. So you feel a wave of energy that comes into your body, and how you would feel these is you would become more sensitive to energy. So um, the way you can become more sensitive to energy is you need to tap into your own to your own truth and the truth of the universe. So there is there is actually everybody has their perception of truth, but there is a universal truth also that is just one truth. And so how you would tap into this truth is you would start to discard all your illusions about yourself and others and all your programming because everybody has been highly programmed. I think, I think you have uh, a, a website about that, don't you? How to exit yes. the matrix or something? Yeah, you yes. have a website about that. That's exactly what we talk about. The illusions that have been placed over us, the veil, the programming, and how there's an organic template, an organic light matrix that Earth was intended to be serving as a physical place for incarnation, and an overlay or or another template, a veil of forgetfulness, and all these other experiences where where, over, where belief systems and programming were inserted into that, and that's what we're experiencing now. Yes, and you see, as you um as you drop all the societal programming and the illusions, then you can break through all that and you can access the truth. So the more you access the truth, the more you're, you become sensitive to the higher energies because that's what is the truth. That is the truth. So in and other the words, truth, we, I'm sorry. The we truth can, is, we is to, love. Exactly. Right. Exactly. That's exactly correct. Because the higher dimensions, the higher you go in dimensions, the more you're accessing pure love and, of course, the love of the creator. And so the higher you go, you know, the more you can access that, which we've been sort of bogged down here in 3D because of all these mistruths that we've been, we've been programmed with, you know, by society, by our parents, by the school, by our workplace. You know, it, it can take... It should take people less time now to deprogram, but it used to take a long time to to deprogram yourself because the energies weren't there to help. Now the energies are here helping us, so it's a little bit easier now. On my show with Greg on Monday with Corey Good, um, Corey explained that we were having not only this these waves of energy coming from the center of the cosmos, but that our galaxy or our, our earth is actually moving into um, and through a part of the galaxy that has like clouds of higher frequency um, information as well. And then um, I just was reading something else today that was saying that not only that, but vortexes of 
of connections with our higher self and source were already were being formed that were that is allowing more of our higher self and more of our source uh, energy to come into our body as we clear and expand from the energy. So we've got a lot of stuff going on right now. And I was, you know, back to the uh, question before yesterday, uh, you were just having some, you know, you said on the fourth and fifth, I believe, and then we had some other oh, yeah. uh, minor waves. Okay. Well, on the fourth and the fifth and the sixth, uh, we went through different things on each day, and each day we got a different download. So, um, like on the the fourth was, uh, you know, a intense download of blurry eyes and pain, eye pain, uh, foggy brain, sleeplessness, um, the dizziness, uh, cramp sopra activations. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then. Seeing fifth dimensional objects, which is just Ooh. what happens during this is, this is what happens during the downloads is we can also then have more access to the higher dimensions and then we can see fifth dimensional objects. So in other words, I could I can then see more orbs. I had seen a Lemurian tablet, you know, uh during this time a little after this I had seen some of these light columns that many people are seeing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then the wave after that was uh, the love wave, the love and compassion wave. And then um, then after that, we've just been getting a lot of um, crown chakra activation all the time, since the fourth, fifth, and the sixth. Now, for people that say, you know, I've heard some people say, like, oh, there's really nothing happening. Yes, there is. There's a lot happening. But you, you just have to be more sensitive to energy, tune into energy, and work on deprogramming yourself from the 3D matrix. And then as soon as you start deprogramming, you're, you're start, you'll you start feeling more and you'll start understanding what, you know, they're going through. There has been a lot going on. And then just tonight, uh, we had another wave come through. And then the eve of equinox, we had another wave come through that was, um, it was, now, the, right before the equinox, it was feeling like, you know, like I felt like I was in a dreamland. Uh, and this is extreme compared to what we have felt like. I have felt at times like I was walking between two worlds, but this is feeling more like I could be in a dream here, and maybe when I go to sleep, I'll be somewhere else. So it was really really pretty intense and then um hot and cold hot and cold spells you'll get too hot and then suddenly you'll be too cold and these are all mm -hmm. hormonal dna upgrades because it's all based on hormones and then some nausea and then too tired and then you know just like today very heavy feeling during this wave that came through very heavy feeling very foggy brain um, and very tired and lethargic. And so then you can't think straight either. You try to read something and you're not really comprehending it. You try to write something or do something and you can't really comprehend it. All you can really do is, is sit there and relax and maybe go into a meditation, which is what I always recommend everybody does is go into a meditation during these um, ways because that's the way you can access the higher energy. It's just by relaxing, accepting the energy that comes in and meditating. And then you may, during meditation, also see a lot of things that you wouldn't normally be able to see. So you can you could then have access more to the higher dimensions and see, you know, fifth dimension and, and beyond um, signs or objects or, or beings or, or whatever. And I think that um, everyone experiences this just a little bit different, but we just wanted to share with the audience tonight uh, some of the things that you were feeling. I've had some videos uh, myself sharing, you know, some of the things that happened to me. But so far, we know that when Diane's getting a wave coming, she gets blurry vision. That's one of the first things that happens, right? No, no, it's, it's different every time, really. Oh, okay. It depends, it depends on, on what kind of wave. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's waves of pure bliss where okay. you know, you're in you're in fifth dimensional uh, 
energy, and you're just in such a blissful state. So every wave is actually different. Every wave is different. Some are very high energy waves, too, where you feel really good and you have a lot of energy to go out and do things. But a lot of the waves are also cleansing because we're cleansing a lot of the, um, you know, the uh, lower energy from the from the collective and from the people, you know, the things that are people that are still programmed and, and uh, you know, the things in 3E. Right. Okay. And so this evening, about an hour and a half ago, I think, um, another wave came through. Tell us uh, what this wave feels like to you if you had to put a word to describe it. It actually just feels like a wave of energy that hits your body. Okay, so physical. You have a wave of energy. Hmm? What? Physical. Yeah. A physical okay. wave of energy that hits your body and then goes through your body, and it stays there for as long as the wave takes to complete, you know, its cycle. Okay. Uh, it, do you still feel it? Because I felt it come, and I tried to. I I I had just laid down to take a quick nap before the show, and I laid down, and bam, I was full of energy. The waves hit me a little bit different too, uh, but I I kind of feel it, but I I I don't. It's not near as intense. No, yeah, it's it's dissipating now. It's yeah. dissipated. Yeah, it lasted yeah. maybe an hour, I would say. Okay. So I have, yeah, I react to it differently. Sometimes I can't write articles. I can't formulate thoughts. Uh, and sometimes when um, when the when a wave comes that is pro-article writing or pro-thought, I have to jump on it right then and get my work done and share and share and share. And I, I may work, you know, all day solid that day because – there's just some days that I just can't. I just can't do it. So uh, I, I can definitely relate to that. Now, um, we have some more key dates to come. Do you think um, that there's going to be between now and, let's say, well, around September 28th or the beginning of October, do you think that it's true that there's going to be one big wave that's kind of a conglomerate of all these other waves that we've had just kind of sweep over us and and is there any kind of major um, evidence that we're going to see uh, that's going to point to the fact that we've had one of these waves? Uh, excuse me. Well, you know, I don't really do predictions. So, And the reason that I can't really do predictions is because the energy is changing all the time. So, in other words, if, let's say I'm giving a psychic reading and, and – uh, I can only tell the person what path they're on right now. If they make a different choice, their energy is going to change, and then they're going to be on a different path. So, in other words, I feel, this is what I feel, I feel that the energies are going to keep coming in, and I'm being also told by the higher realms that they're going to keep coming in through October. So I know they're going to keep coming in. As far as one big wave, I don't know for sure about that. I'm not being okay. told. I haven't gotten any, I'm not being told anything from the higher realms about one big wave, but I am being told that the waves are going to continue coming in and um, they're going to continue through October. That's what I'm being told right now. Okay, and you've seen an acceleration over the many, many years you've been experiencing these. Well, like yeah, one, and also, closer and together. Also a huge, yeah, and also, yes, and also a huge change. And the way that the mm -hmm. energies are hitting us now compared to the the way they hit us in 2011, you know, I used to have I used to have waves where, like you said, I was stuck in my I was stuck in a chair. Okay, I, I would be stuck in a chair. The waves would hit my consciousness, and I would be stuck in a chair for about an hour and couldn't basically couldn't move. I haven't gotten one of those in probably at least a year. So those kind of waves aren't really hitting me now. It's more uh, more subtle waves and more um, lifting. I feel like we're just being more lifted instead of just being um, kind of compressed and pushed down. We're more being lifted now. Because I think okay. there was a lot of cleansing, cleansing that had to take place in the past that's already been done now. Well, we went through a lot of cleansing, all of us, for the collective. 
Now, do you think that we have to turn into our light body completely in order to make the actual shift of the frequency of the earth from the third to the fifth? Well, or do you think, think it's a, like, at the same time thing? I think like I think that our consciousness, many people's consciousness right now is already in the fifth dimension. Mm-hmm. So our consciousness has already moved there. Now we're just waiting for the body to catch up. But, you know, I've seen a lot of fifth dimensional beings, and they're not completely in physical form. So, yeah, we have to, we have to turn somewhat into a light body because, you know, all the star beings and everything that I've seen, they're fifth dimensional and beyond. So they can, they can, turn, they can be in the physical, but they're also in the, in the more of a light body. You know, just and like spirits, spirits are kind of a light body also. They're kind of, you know, a floaty, transparent type of body. But right. spirits can also appear, spirits can also appear physical. So they have that option. They all have that option to switch back and forth. Right. And so I, the way I expect, and, and I, there's no time frame on this, because, and I think it might be different for everybody as far as the time that this occurs. It could happen to a group at once. But the way I am interpreting some of the things I have read and then felt into, that there may be a point of time where you do actually shift into the light body like you did, and then you commune with your family, and you maybe, you know, go out of, slip out of time, You may even need to go to school. You may have to, um, you know, have a little debriefing, a little information on what you need to bring back. And, you know, we're talking about the teachers, the healers, uh, and then you may come back and you may choose to come back into your physical body with this knowledge and um, no time has has left, maybe five minutes here. You may have been gone three weeks. Um, I'm hoping that that kind of thing will happen so that we can continue to share fifth dimensional knowledge and higher, higher dimensional knowledge, uh, knowledge from our multidimensional selves, from our other lifetimes to other people, you know, and just continue to help until a, a whole bunch of people get prepared, you know, for a light body. Now, I don't know. It could, you know, time is so funny. How how long do you think, I mean, I know it's going to happen in my lifetime. That's what I came here for. But do um, you think maybe by 2017 or are we talking 30 years, maybe we can rejuvenate yeah. our bodies a little and hang out before the light body time? Or what? What you, if we could rejuvenate our bodies, it could be 100 years before we actually shift into our light body or more. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think so. I feel it's going to be within the next, you know, a few years or the next year. I mean, How exciting. It, 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 the waves are coming too too fast, and they're too um, they're they're changing too much. And now we're having time slips. You know, like I talked about, and time slip is part of going into the fifth dimension. We can be here and have a time slip, and actually be partially in the fifth dimension when the time slip takes place. You know, I had and that's I've had many many time slips, but I had a time slip the other day where. I think you read about that where um I looked at I looked at my computer clock and it was one AM and I said, No, I've got to get to bed because I have an appointment early the next morning. I went to bed and I was laying there for fifteen minutes. I wasn't tired, so I got up. I opened my computer again and um my computer clock said a three three AM. So yes. I, I lost two hours. I lost two hours, and I've had this happen many times, mostly around 20 minutes now. It's very common to lose about 20 minutes, but this is the first time I've lost about two hours. Yes, I posted one of your articles on how to exit the matrix called First Wave of September Has Arrived, Frequency Upgrade Commencing. And uh, like I said at the beginning of the show, um, you write some cool articles can be found on diannecanfield.com. Now, I had a very interesting experience last night. Um, Greg and I were into a a big 
fifth dimensional and higher discussion about Corey Good and the sphere beings and the inner earth beings, and we were just bantering back and forth. I went over to turn my little desk lamp on next to my bed, and the light bulb didn't work. And usually on these little lamps, you know, you turn it on and then the, the bulb blows. But in this case, the bulb was blown already. And so I had to get up and go to the floor lamp. I turned the floor lamp on, did what I needed to do, and Greg was here. I turned the floor lamp off. It takes two clicks because it's three-way lamp. Turned it off. We went to sleep. And early this morning, I woke up. It was still dark outside, but that floor lamp was on. Um, I thought, well, maybe Greg, for some reason, turned it on. Uh, I didn't feel like getting up. And so I just rolled over and went back to sleep. Greg got up, and I heard him click, click, turn it off. And a few minutes later, I went in there and we talked about it. And we neither one of us have a clue on how that lamp got turned on. You literally have to turn it hard, click to turn it on. So, oh. yeah, that those, was really weird. Kind of things, yeah, that's those kind of things can happen when we're, especially when we're getting uh, the waves coming in. And we just had one um, Equinox Eve, and then we just had one today. So it makes sense. I mean. It, all kind of other dimensional things can take place. So that, you know, that that makes sense that that would happen in that, um, you know, in that kind of thinking of fifth dimension and beyond. Well, and if that wasn't enough, uh, Greg likes to keep a digital, digital clock by his bed. So when he does wake up, he knows what time it is. I use my, my phone, which a lot of people say don't sleep with your phone by the bed, but I do. Um, and the digital clock actually uh, was flashing, and it had lost an hour and 14 minutes. It, it it's flashing, but it kept um, it kept uh, it kept the time going, although it, it it obviously had lost power and then come back on. Um, so, but we didn't lose power. We didn't have a power outage around the house. Um, we didn't have any storms or anything. So um, I, I, you know, sometimes wonder if that's, if we are actually doing stuff, we go somewhere and we thought, well, you know, we've both been asking for, please let us remember, please let us remember where we've been, the things we're learning, because I think we can handle it, although we probably made um, an agreement not to remember, but I think this time we left the light on for ourselves, just oh, as a, yeah, a cosmic yeah. joke. You know, <laughs> yeah, and the clock yeah. too. Yeah, and during yeah. these, and during these time, uh, tr time shifts, we can go to other places, but then not remember when we come back where we were. That's that's yeah. also true. That's also very common. That's right. Okay, so um, if we don't it, it, during ascension, if we don't go um into a light body and stay on Earth, what are, are the other choices? Um that we could, you know, perhaps somebody's done with this physical lifetime or um, perhaps somebody needs to return to source. Can you give us a little bit of information on other, like there's so many different beings here having different experiences. Not everybody's going to do the exact same thing. Are you familiar with other things that maybe people could um, expect? Well, I see, I believe, that everybody now is giving the, given the chance to ascend. And it will take some people longer, but everybody will go through the ascension process. That's, okay. that's what even I the, believe. Even the negative beings that yeah, don't? That okay. Yeah, because because are they, there, will be, there will be more and more ways of love coming, and they won't have any choice. You know, everybody has to, at some point, they have to, they will have to get, these waves, you know, they will have to accept these waves coming in. You know, it's just like um, in 2000, it was around 2012, I, uh, the sun, you know, that's when the sun was really starting to change. And um, the sun was hitting me so intensely that I, in, in the daytime, I had to shut all my curtains. I couldn't let any sun into my house. And when I would go out, I'd have to wear three pair of sunglasses. And so, oh my gosh! So, yeah, and I had to wear shields over the outer layer so that no sun would hit my eyes at all. And that's how extreme the sun was coming. And we know that the, 
you know, DNA activations are coming from the, the part of them are coming from the sun. So the, what I was told then was that I had I had already had enough um, raising, you know, of my vibrational level for that time period. But it but the light coming down was for everyone, you know, not just me, but other people had. I'm not saying, you know, that I was the only one in this in this level, but a lot of other people were in the same level that I was in. But there was many people that needed more light. So they had to, the light had to be increased to an intense level to hit everyone. So I feel it's the same way with these waves. They'll just keep increasing, 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 and everybody eventually will, will go, will have the chance to ascend. Everybody will have. Now they could... They could also choose to pass on. That's the other. That's the other issue is that a lot of these energies are too intense, and so a lot of people have been passing on and right. taking that route because yeah, because the energies are just too intense and they can't handle it. Right. And where do they go from there? I mean, do they have different paths? Do some go back to other planets that they lived on? Do some go back to their join their oversoul? Do some hang out in the astral realm? What's going to happen well, to people go, that are in the astral realm? Well, they go. They, they, the people that pass go back to source energy. They go back to source energy. That's their first stop. You know, that's how, as a as a medium, we could talk to the ones who have passed on, because they they're all going back to the you know source energy, and then they decide from there where they're going to go after that. Okay, so I think I guess what. Um, I'm getting at is the dark beings they've they've known for a while that this is happening and they've had a choice to leave or to stay here and can change their polarity from negative to positive and so they're kind of going through what some people might call a negative ascension path where they served as a catalyst by the um, negative type um energy that would get you to wake up because things are so bad like i'm going to give you an example like um our politicians and the banking system and all of the tight constrict controls that's happening right now on the planet um so all those guys i mean there's some of them that i understood though i mean i think they all have a choice so the earth is going to shift they don't have a choice whether the earth shifts or not but they could have jumped ship by now uh, or they are they stuck here, and they're they're gonna they're gonna either be sent, they're either gonna go out of body and go back to source, or they're gonna stay in their body and make the choice to shift. Is is that how you see it? Yes, right. That's how I see it. So right. that's gonna be difficult for them, and it's also gonna be difficult for people who have yet to awaken to understand what's happening and are carrying around a lot of fear and negative emotions. And I think a lot of people are going to kind of like go insane a little bit, don't you think? Well, yeah, I mean, fear fear is a big factor, and that's one thing that, that stops the ascension process is fear. So the fear, anybody with fear, this you know, this needs to be dealt with because they, they need to deal with this themselves because this really stops all higher dimensional aspects to everything. So let's say you let's say a person sees a spirit like I do. You see a spirit, you know, comes into your room or something. If you go into fear immediately, that spirit goes away, immediately goes away, and you probably will never see a spirit again. So it stops all it stops all progress with people. And so I see. That, that's, yeah, and that's the other thing is that the fear is deliberately being uh, being produced, you know. Uh, for the population to keep people in fear so that, you know, so that we don't ascend as fast as we, as we could, as we could be doing. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is why you, no one should really be focused on anything negative at all, because any, anytime you focus on anything negative, you're lowering your vibration. Anytime you focus on anything negative at all, because then you've got to drop your vibration down to, where they are because you're putting energy onto their lower vibration. So to stay in a high vibration, you have to only focus on positive things and not focus on anything negative at all. Now, you could be aware of it. You know, I'm aware of what's happening, 
I'm totally aware, believe me, of everything that's happening, but I don't want to put any energy into anything negative because I don't want to drop my vibration down. Right. You you really have to learn to be the observer and to not put any emotion into what's happening. But on the other hand, to let emotion occur, you don't want to be a zombie or emotionless, um, you know, because that's part of the clearing process. Sometimes crying or anger can help move energy through your body because your emotional body is a clearing house for your physical body. So, um, yeah, you don't want to, but you, but when it comes to observing what's happening on the planet and the history that, you know, pe- that has been kept from us and things like that, you definitely want to uh, be the observer on that and not have uh, any judgment for the way that things have unfolded. Right. So, and um, you want to be, you want to be aware, you know, you want to see the things that are going on and be aware, of course, you know, keep up to date with what's actually happening but not let it affect you emotionally um, or make you mad, make you angry, make you afraid, um, get you, okay, distract you. That's another thing is that uh, they use distraction. Yeah, yeah and, and then you'll get all distracted in this one thing, and then, oh, my God, you know, uh, a few weeks later, oh, what, is, what happened? Where did I go there? And nothing, not, that was useless. So, yeah, yeah, you know, and and that's a big ploy is distraction. Yes. And so how else can one prepare? I mean, you know, we talk about this till we're blue in the face on how to prepare for these ascension waves. We're already addressed fear. We already addressed distraction. What about diet, physical body, um, meditation? What other things uh, can you offer for our listeners? tonight on on okay. preparation. Well, they should be grounding every day. Grounding. Grounding is very key because we want to ascend with the earth. So as we ground, we're connecting with the earth and our energy is connected the right to the earth's energy. So we want to be on exactly the same wavelength as the earth. And I was just told this in in one of my articles I wrote that you you need to connect with the earth and you need to maintain that connection so going outside the ground and it's not just walking around in bare feet we have to put our we have to put our bare feet on the ground and then push the energy down through the head through the crown chakra into the ground push it all the way down through our body into the to the earth and then what happens is the earth brings uh brings her energy back up through us and we gain all the knowledge and all the vibration and all the wisdom and all the frequency of the earth when we do that. So, and all the other dimensional experiences can come up through us also. So that is, grounding is extremely important. And, uh, you know, grounding at least once a day. And if you have severe symptoms, you could ground 10 times a day. I've had to do this. I've had to go outside every five minutes and ground. Mm. And that is, sometimes that is the only thing that stops them. You know, I had electric shocks going up the legs in, I think it was 2011 or 2012, electric shocks that went, started at my feet and went up all the way up to my thighs. And they were coming like every, every 10 minutes. And it was really painful. And it feels something like restless leg syndrome, but it's, it's more severe because it's a shock going right up the leg. And wow. I, would, you, I would walk around. And hope that it would stop, but that it wouldn't stop. So the only thing that I found that helped it was to ground. And I would go outside and ground every five minutes, and then pretty soon it was gone. Because the earth takes that energy on from you also. Like the earth yeah. is a healer. So it takes it away. Anything you're going through, anything painful, any fearful thing, any sickness, anything, go out into nature. Nature, the earth will always take everything away. You know, the trees, the plants, the flowers. They all have elementals that are put here just to help humans. You may not see them, but they're there. They all will help humans. So you go out, you're feeling bad about anything, go out, sit in nature, sit, get a chair, sit next to a tree, and then just stand up every once in a while and start grounding. And within a short period of time, you'll feel great. That's all that it takes. You don't need to go, you don't need to go take a pill. You don't need to go have a drink. You know, you don't need to do any of those things. Just go into nature. That nature is there, there for us for 
for everything. And, and especially right now, we need to be really connected with nature. So that's, so that's one thing. I can go on and on about that for a long time. So then yes. um, meditate. Well, May I Go interject ahead. and just say that, you yeah. know, part of that is, is allowing the energy to flow through your crown chakra. Well, there's a chakra above your head, and, of course, there's lots of minor chakras. But the energy flow right now is so important. And when the energy gets stuck, that's when you have your physical symptoms. Like, for instance, migraines. You did a video on, uh, on, on migraines, and, you, you, you know, you did a meditation in there that shows that, that gives an example on how to push that energy through the crown chakra. And sometimes right. when you when you ground to the planet and you don't um, work on actually physically moving the energy through the body, it can go up into your head and get stuck and cause headaches. So exactly. that was a very, very helpful video that you did. And I believe I put it in uh, one of the articles on N5D. So um, you can yeah, find that on you. Diane's website. Yes. Okay, yeah, so yes. Well, now how this how this uh, came to be also was I also had a near death experience, and the only thing that stopped this near death experience was for me to ground. That and I did it right in the hospital room. I started again leaving my body again. Okay, and this whole reality started disappearing. I put my arms out in front of me. My arms started disappearing. Up to wow. the elbow, I couldn't see my arm. Right. So this is what happens when we pass on from here. This reality disappears, and then the new one, as soon as this one disappears, you see the new one. That's what starts to happen. And, yeah, and so I, I wasn't ready. You know, I wasn't ready to leave. But what right. happened is the hospital, the hospital had given me um, too much medication. They gave me 10 shots in a row. Ten intravenous shots in a row of different kinds of medication, and that was because I was that was because I was having headaches, and I had just two weeks before that I had been in a retail store, and I had um, a other dimensional experience, and I think what happened is that sent too much energy through my body, and that I didn't realize I needed to ground at that time. That was years ago. I didn't realize I needed to ground. And so the energy then caused me severe headaches, so severe that I had to be hospitalized. And so that's when you came so, up with that meditation. Yeah. Yeah. And this, and this, uh, this, um, this uh, experience was where I was being, um, I heard these strange sound uh, earth noises, like what you just talked about, like what we talked about a little while ago. And then I was basically paralyzed in the retail store, and I heard these strange earth sounds. So a fifth-dimensional portal opened up above me and was, like, communicating with me. And I was stuck there for, like, 15 minutes in the store, and I looked around. No one else felt it. It was only me. (laughs) I was the only one going through it. Yes, and then it was only two weeks after that, and then I started having severe head pain, so severe that, like I said, I had to be hospitalized. So then the only way I could stop that was grounding in the hospital, and I pushed. My spirit was actually leaving through my crown chakra. I felt it leaving through the top of my head, and I had to push it back down in my body. Mm. Well, you know, another um sometimes I feel like I have to, you know, ground myself a lot. I like to take baths and I like to be in water um to ground myself. I use uh Himalayan pink sea salt and baking soda. I use the baking soda for cleansing and um and I thank the water and thank the salts, thank the soda. And another thing I like to do personally, I mean everybody has their own way of grounding. I like to eat potatoes. Potatoes are very grounding for me, and uh, they can really calm things down and slow things down for me because I think sometimes I do get a little accelerated, and my body says, whoa, wait a minute, you need to to slow down. And so I'll I'll get a craving to eat potatoes. So (laughs) Greg's always, you know, joking. That's great. But meditation meditation always also works. So, um, Mm -hmm. you know, to meditate, meditate daily. And, um, 
you know, a lot of people do take baths, and it, it works for them. I don't. I like to go to the ocean also because I'm yes. about five minutes from the beach. So the salt water is basically the same idea. I go to the ocean, and I get into the ocean, and that that makes me feel so much better. Yes, and, you know, it gets a little cool in the winter time. So, uh, but we, yeah, we just went to the beach yesterday and spent a lot of time there. I, I did I did notice the sun was extremely powerful yesterday. I stayed in the shade the whole time, but the reflection off of that white quartz crystal sand gave me this immense sunburn. Um, wow. I didn't think I needed sunscreen in the shade, but I was. Uh, we were out there at least an hour and a half, and I was in the shade, and I got this sunburn. So, yeah, we know wow. something's going on there. Um, yeah, the sun is the sun is really powerful right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I drink a lot of water. We use a, we use an ozone machine for our water to give it some oxygen to to get, put more oxygen in our blood. Um, drinking a lot of uh, purified water, pure water, uh, spring water. You know, nothing with fluoride in it. What other uh, things can we do pr- to prepare our bodies? You know, we of course everybody listening to this show knows. You know, try, you know, don't drink any sodas, try, you know, all the food things we've talked yeah. about, not necessarily being a, a vegan, but um, trying to eat what your body's telling you to eat. If you need meat, then eat it, try to eat organic or grass fed. Um, and if your body's saying, I don't want any meat, just make sure that you're not having a fear of eating an animal and that it's not fear based versus you know what your body really could use right now to keep yourself grounded in your body. Well, I would say also um through meditation you can expand your consciousness. And when you expand your consciousness, then you can get, you know, your own guidance from the universe and if you listen to the guidance, you know, you're never going to go wrong. So, and guidance yeah. will always be uh, guidance will always be positive. Okay, it will never be negative. It will always be positive, uh, soothing, you know, um, angelic, feeling. So everybody needs to, I would say, to work on being able to hear their own guidance and what is right for them and what's going, you know, what's going on with them and what direction they need to go because everybody is at a different place in the ascension process. Some people are just starting, and then some people have been doing it for years. So, you know, at one time I tracked, I was tracking these waves in the very beginning, like extreme tracking. And I was hit with the wave. And a month later, I saw a, online a whole group of people that were that were hit with the exact same wave. Interesting. So sometimes, yes. So sometimes, you see, it depends on where you are, what wave you're going to get hit with, because that the wave is what you need. And so then you might feel completely different than somebody else getting hit because they might get hit with the wave that you got hit with six months ago because they they might be only, you know, in that level, in that level of their ascension. So it, it can take place like that. So the inner guidance is really important for, for, um, for everyone. And this is also why, you know, I'm, I didn't want to advertise. I'm not trying to advertise or anything, but if you can become, if you can, as you become more psychic, you know, you, you have more guidance, and then you also learn to remove the fear because you understand that the universe is working with you, and you're being shown things for your highest good. So if I see a spirit, I'm, I'm being shown this for my highest good. What is the message of the spirit? Well, the spirit might just be we exist. We, we, you're seeing us because to show you that we exist. So then you can take the experience of seeing the spirit, you can adapt it into your body, you can integrate it into who you are, because it's it's not enough just to have an experience. You have to actually go through a process of integration with the experience in order to expand your consciousness. So you can integrate it into your body, adapt it, you know, you could say, why did I see the spirit? What's happening here? What do I need to work on? And then your consciousness can expand from just seeing the spirit. So it's like that with ascension too. Anything that happens to us with ascension, why did this happen and what does it mean for me specifically and what do I need to do? How do I need to, to 
adapt to this and how do I need to change? Maybe I need to remove some of these illusions or the programming that I had, and now maybe I'm ready to do that. Right, and you actually have a psychic development class on your website is what you're describing yeah. there? Okay. Yeah, I am, yeah. Okay. And, and these classes help people to to go through what I was just saying because as the ascension process continues, everybody becomes psychic. You know, I've always said this, psychic, ETs, and ascension are all related. So mm-hmm. as everybody goes through the ascension process, it's not only me going to be seeing spirits or, or, or orbs or, or whatever I see or having visions or seeing, seeing things on, you know, dogs on the side of the road that are giving me a message that nobody else can see. You know, all these things that happen to me, everybody is going to be dealing with this soon. So then how do you deal with all this? You have to stay out of fear. You have to stay out of fear in order to deal with it. So um, that's why it's best now to start working on getting rid of illusions and getting rid of programming because that also gets rid of fear. Because the fear is just something that has been manufactured and, you know, uh, programmed into all of us as a 3D society, but it's not real. It's not real. We don't really have anything to be afraid of. So. Well, as far as tips on how to develop the psychic skills, I think a lot of people already have found that they have intuition and um, they're able to feel, maybe feel some energies. Some people already have their uh, their clairvoyance, the ability to see other beings, maybe with their eyes closed through their through their third eye. Um, but for those uh, those people out there that um, that aren't, I mean, most people have psychic skills and use them. They just they're not even realizing it. But for those people who would like to have a few tips right here, is there something that can unblock the third eye, or is there some kind of? Um, I mean, really, we've talked about most of them: meditation, grounding, um, making sure you're not taking any fluoride in getting some some clearing uh, things like a sea salt bath or uh, swimming in the ocean, you know, those things all will develop your psychic skills. But what? how do you really focus on? Um, is there maybe um, do you ask your, your, your higher self or your guides to help uh, you to tune in? How does that – give us some tips. Well, uh, I would say meditation is the – is going to be the biggest thing. And, and, you know, in my classes, I teach how to meditate in a way that helps to open up your third eye because some people do are doing meditation uh, in a way that's not really helping them. All right. So, so that's one thing. And then, um, and then also finding the truth, as I talked about earlier, if you look for the truth, and you drop illusions and you drop the programming, this helps to open up your third eye because this shows you what's real and what's not real. So that's the fifth dimension and above is what's real and programming and illusion are not real. Right. So searching. See, this is how I started it on my path is that I started searching for truth. That was the beginning of my path back in 2000. And that was after I saw a huge mothership UFO that was, you know, uh, right in broad daylight. So then I was like, oh, my God, okay, I have to start seeing now what's the truth and what's not here. <laughs> right. So like, and that's, that's what I ask for every day. Every day I just want to find the truth. And what the way I do that is I do a little bit of mixture of external digging and feeling through that internally to to be able because in my job I have to come up with information to be able to share with other people and I'm not a channeler uh or I, I say I'm not, but I, I do channel a lot of my higher self and a lot of the beings that are in other lifetimes that I've had. It's like a conglomerate that I have. When I do speak, sometimes I'm channeling them. Um, but, um, so I do a little mixture of it and that, that took, that took the the long road. Basically it took me a long time to go through a bunch of material and figure out, uh, by putting pieces of the puzzle together, what I feel like the truth is. And, you know, the truth can change, you know, because 
sometimes you need to go down a certain path to understand something before you actually see the bigger picture of things. So I totally understand about um, seeking the truth. Now, you talked about ETs. Um, can you give us a little inkling personally or in readings that you could share? What are some of the most pertinent ET messages that um, you've received uh, up to date about Ascension? Um, well, I, I've been told that um, um, everything is is on the right path. I've been told that uh, we may feel, this was back in 2014, I was told you may feel like you're on the same earth, but you're not on the same earth now. Um, you know, I've had many ETs come to me and basically, I had one, uh, Octura was her name, a Palladian uh, female um, ET, and she had crosses all over her face. Okay, she was all in gold. She was in a gold dress and long gold hair. She had crosses all over her, and that message was to merge with Christ consciousness, which is the pure love. So that that was the message that I got from her. And then um, I was also visited by three Altarians. These aren't widely known. And they told me that we, this was like a year, I think, ago, and they told me everything is going as planned and we're on the right path. And this was also, this is a very interesting story. I don't know if you want me to get into it now or not. Sure, we um, have time. Okay. Okay. Uh, there was a, a um, there was the loud earth noises going on over our, ha- our house. And this went on for four days straight, day and night, four days straight. And I, I had my daughter come over there, come over to our house, and also listen to them, and she also heard them. And we looked for the source. Uh, my husband and I went around, and we looked for the source everywhere. It wasn't coming from anywhere. As we drove around their ha- our house, they got less and less. So they were they were coming from uh, from above our house. So finally, on the fourth day that morning. I woke up, and I had these three Altarians standing right in front of me in my bedroom. And they're bluish green with, like, a bluish green, uh, kind of a bluish um, outfit on. Um, Oh, I can't think of the name of it now, but it's, uh, oh, like a jumpsuit. Okay, they were wearing, like, jumpsuits. And there was two females and the the male. And they appeared to me. They told me that everything was going as planned in the ascension process, and they left. And then I immediately went outside, and the sound was gone. So there was a portal above our house that was opening up into the higher dimensions, and that's how they were coming through. Yes. Yes. And that sounds kind of like creaking and groaning. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it sounds like. And it could also sound like heavy machinery or Mm -hmm. taking off. Jackhammers. Yes. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. what it sounds like. We've had that. We've had that at our other house here about a year ago uh, um, on the island uh, on Siesta Key. So we've heard that. We've had that experience. Well, yeah, that was about the same time. We've heard that, too. So, okay. Yeah. So um, so we're on the right path. We're on the right track. And uh, we're moving fast. And um, tell us about... Um, Tell us about CERN. Uh, I think CERN has pretty much proven to fail. I mean, we're still on the right path and track. There are beings working with, uh, from what I understand, in the sky, maybe um, where the beam is supposed to be put into the sky. Perhaps they're working on collapsing time and space right at that coordinate. Um, All kinds of different things going on with CERN. But uh, what is CERN actually? So many. Why are there so many ideas? of what CERN is is to be used for, and what do you think that they're trying to do with CERN uh, overall? I think, CERN, I think, yeah, I think CERN is trying to stop the ascension. I think it is trying to stop the ascension, and uh, but it's not going to succeed. You know, it's, nothing is going to succeed that that anybody is trying. So we we don't, mm-hmm. I don't really, we don't have to worry about it because they're they're not going to succeed anyway. But they try, okay, that, you know, 
they tried, you know, as we talked about, they try with their fear, they try with their distractions, they try with uh, pitting people against each other, they they try with every way they can, but they're not going to succeed. Absolutely. And there's no need to even, you know, really um, dwell on any of this, on all of these things that are happening. I mean, you know, the food and water and air, we all know that they're trying to poison that. But, you know, if you take your food and you bless it um, and you give it love and you eat it and you imagine you're eating light, it can actually benefit you no matter what it is, no matter what's in the food. Um, except, I mean, of course, you know, you're not going to go out and get McDonald's, but I'm talking about, you know, your, your everyday food that you're eating now, um, your water, you know, if you, if you can only afford tap water, take that water, put your love into it, hold it, talk to it, thank it. And you can change the vibration of that water. Um, the air, the, you know, if you are running your energy and grounding every day, mother earth is going to help you clear out any toxins, any metals and things like that that are coming in in the air. So there are ways that we're being able to get through this, yes. Yeah, and you're, you know, if you have a connection, this is is why it's so important to have a connection with your higher self and a connection to the universe is that that connection will always, um, you know, be in your best interest anyway. So anything that happens, you know, you'll be guided. Don't do this or go this direction or or whatever, even if you even if you would, you know, drink some water that had fluoride, it just basically wouldn't affect you anyway. It wouldn't affect you, so it wouldn't make any difference. And we have found that when you do raise your vibration, um that I mean that pretty much vibrates everything apart that you bring into your body anyway. You just don't you know, want to go in excess and think that you can go out and have a big heavy meal at some restaurant. And it's not going to make, you know, your vibration go down because it will. You just got to learn how to, you know, besides blessing the food, you got to learn to uh, maybe move that energy around your body a little bit, do a little exercise to uh, compensate for it. And always just listen to your body. If you're feeling really tired, that doesn't mean necessarily that your vibration level is low. But if you ate a big meal, if you went out to a restaurant, went out and ate a big meal and came back and you're a little tired, then yeah. It's probably from the food, and you just work on yourself and imagine that you're vibrating again. Your imagination and your thought and the way that you're thinking has a profound impact on how you're going to feel and how your reality is going to unfold. Right. Well, we create our reality ourselves, so we're creating it every day. So we're creating it with every choice we make. So um, you can create any reality that you want for yourself. Basically, this, there's no limit to what you can create for yourself. There basically is no limit at all. There's The only limits are the limits that we put on ourselves. Otherwise, there's no limit. Exactly. And so, well, we, we were not going to have a marathon show like most of my shows tonight. We agreed on about an hour and a half or an hour and 15 minutes into it. About the last yeah. question I have is... Um, about the downloads, a lot of people are having um, these geometric shapes and lights and different things in their third eye. Maybe when they're sleeping and they just wake up, they're receiving these downloads. Or when they go into their meditation, they're they're seeing uh, these downloads as well. Now, are these downloads um, really ideas that unfold or part of your reality that unfolds during the day or during the next day? Or are they for packets for later, uh, or are they a mixture of both? Well, the geometric shape is just the beginning phase of opening up your third eye. When you meditate and you see geometric shape, that's the beginning of opening up your third eye. Later, after that, you'll see a lot of things. And, you know, you'll see beans, you'll, you'll get messages, you'll have all kinds of things happening to you when you're meditating. So that's geometric shapes are just the beginning phase of your third eye opening. Okay, great. So um, what other downloads are possible? Just Uh, energy waves? I mean, just just energy? Because you you had mentioned that, you you know, you receive uh, downloads with some of these waves. Yeah, well, downloads uh, are informational. Yes, informational. um, 
DNA pieces to come through. So after, after you get a download, uh, you might then have to go into your past and re reconcile your past, and um, you might be prompted to uh, make amends, you know, and, and you might be able to figure out, like, why did this relationship not work out? And then you'll have all this fifth-dimensional information coming through you that you didn't have before. So, yes, so a lot of the ways come with, they come with more information for us. Because as we get a wave or a download, we then um, are, are vibrating at a higher level of consciousness, so then we can see things in a brand new way, in a way that we couldn't see things before. So, so yeah. So then you might you might think of things in a way you never you never thought of them before. Like um, I was with my husband. Why didn't it work out? Suddenly, then you'll know why it didn't work out. It'll just come to you, and you'll be like, Oh, that's why it didn't work out. Okay. I so see. suddenly you'll think it, you'll get information that you didn't get in the past, and it'll just come to you without you even trying. Without without it even being difficult, or you'll be That's, able to see yeah. things. You'll be able to see things in a new way. Like, why are these why are these homeless? You know, people allowed to be homeless. Whereas in the in the past, maybe you never even thought of the person might not have even thought about the homeless people. You know, they might have just passed by them, and then suddenly, why is this happening? I don't. You know, this doesn't make any sense. When when we're living in a fifth dimensional consciousness. Then the things that made sense to us in 3D now no longer make any sense. So every you know every wave can come with a download that propels us higher into the fifth dimension. Then we have expanded consciousness and we can see things in a new way. So that's the purpose to expand us and propel us into a higher vibration. Exactly, and that's when I feel the most creative to do. I might be sitting here and all of a sudden I'll have a, a thought and a very detailed understanding of something within about, you know, a second, but it's like all this unfolds in my head. And that's when I started doing these videos where I just go sit in front of the computer, turn it on, turn the camera on. Well, of course I got to brush my hair first, maybe put a little makeup on. And while I'm doing that, I'm thinking of more stuff, you know, and then I get in front of the computer and just let it all out, you know? So that's the kind of downloads that I experience. Well, I get, I do, I do, I do the same thing. I will write, I will go through writing article after article after article, and they don't all get published maybe at the same time. But you're exactly right because creativity is also of the higher dimensions. You know, the more, the higher you go in dimensions, of course, the more creative you become. And some days I just don't feel like doing anything. I don't feel like turning my brain on. I can't focus. And those days I just have to. We need those recharge times. Yeah, I just forgive myself, and I don't feel guilty about sleeping, and I don't feel guilty about eating potatoes. <laughs> so, so let's talk about DNA. Uh, I did think of that. Um, DNA activation. What is it actually, I mean, what is it going to be like to have our DNA template um, basically filled with light and turned back on, you know, we're only using 97% of our original DNA. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 3% and 97% is like junk DNA or dormant. I mean, is this going to happen in conjunction with a light body or is this going to turn on a little at a time? I know we're already, we already must be experiencing this and children have been proven to have three strands and more, but so far they're only telling us about children that have three strands activated, and these are psychic, very psychic children, our indigo and crystal children. Uh, is this going to be a gradual thing, or is this going to be something that pretty much just turns on with the light? No, no, it's gradual. It's already been happening. It's already happening. That's, that's how I explained that everybody is going to become psychic. So they'll become way more than intuitive way more than just feeling, they'll actually be an inner knowing. You know, they'll know things. And so the DNA is already changing us. It's already in effect. It's already been in effect. And it just gradually is going to happen now where everybody is going to go to a higher consciousness level. And then, you know, um, this is why I always stress that when more and more people you know, share things, 
because then more and more people have a chance to awaken, and then we can get to a tipping point, and at a tipping point is when our, all of our, you know, turning into the light body could take place because it's going to take a certain amount of people um, to reach that level for it to take place. Perfect. And um, we haven't had any questions from the chat room, so we're going to kind of wrap it up here. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners tonight as you um, join our, our cosmic uh, our cosmic family? Um, I've really enjoyed um, your energy, and I've enjoyed your knowledge about the way that you feel these waves coming in, and I appreciate you coming on. Oh, well, thank you, Michelle. I uh, really have enjoyed you, too, and you also have a very nice high energy also. Um, oh, I would thank just you. Thank, <laughs> I would just thank everyone for the work that they've already done because we've been cleansing that collective, and this is not easy. You know, we've been taking a lot of the uh, lower vibrational energy from the collective and cleansing it through us, transmuting it into high energy through our body. So I would just like to thank everyone for their contributions and and um, you know everyone and, and just to keep you know just to keep um, working on raising your vibration because it's so important at this time and a lot of us are really called like you're called I'm called to get this information out this is you know I I really didn't have a choice about this this is a calling that I'm being you know, told to do this. So this is this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm listening to the call. And there's no better satisfaction and fulfillment of your of your life when you're doing uh, what you're called to do. It's it's a very delicate balance and struggle of making a living, uh, doing the calling of talking about ascension and how to raise your vibration. But you have to be creative. And when you're doing your calling, you're going to get all the help uh, from your guides and angels to help open doors and make sure that you at least are able to cover, you know, a place to live and your bills and where to live and all kinds of things unfold for you. So if you're listening and you're thinking about, well, I'd really like to leave my government job or I'd really like to leave my banking job and really do things to help and over the next couple of years as we, you know, quickly move into this ascending into a light body, uh, I suggest that now would be a good time. And, uh, you know, you just make your declaration to you, the universe that you're going to lose your fears uh, and, and go for it. And I think it's going to be assisted by a global, global economic crash. And um, when we're all on the same level monetarily, I think um, we're going to all roll up our sleeves and get in together and help each other move through this and there's nothing to fear it's actually going to be a blessing oh definitely and you know the universe helps those that help themselves so as soon as the person starts taking action and self-loving action the universe then kicks in if a person sits, sits in a room all day and doesn't take any action which is if you just sit in a room all day that's not self-loving so the more self-loving you are and the more action you take to to further yourself, the more help you will get from the universe. Because then synchronicities will start to happen, and people will come into your lives that you never dreamed were possible, and things will start happening for you just by yourself being self-loving and taking action, you know, that shows that you love yourself. That's really all that it takes. Absolutely. That's what we talk about on N5D and on my, all my articles. You'll you'll hear me talk about that. And I'm I'm a walking example. I couldn't talk about it if I hadn't had to work really, really hard on myself. A lot of people um, want to know what they can be doing at this time. And working on yourself is the number one thing. When you get to a level to where you're not affected by the external environment, then I suggest you turn around and share that, pay it forward and tell people how you how you accomplished that and uh, just be there for people. Be, you know, be a listener and uh, share your own truth and don't try to convince anybody of anything. Just allow it to unfold 
for you to be able to share whatever they're willing to hear. So, and with that being right. said, um, that's exactly why, um, why I enjoy having guests like you with that understanding. Uh, now you're going to start um, your psychic readings again up on October 1st. Uh, apparently you feel that that's a safe time for you to where you're not going to be popped into a state of bliss or out of your body while these waves come through and um, you're going to turn it right back up um, and help people. Uh, you, you, you're not the kind of psychic that is going to tell people what's going to unfold in their lives as much as uh, you can connect with uh, maybe a loved one to help uh, close healing, uh, closure. Uh, you're going to help people uh, maybe uh, figure out and, and, you know, confirm how to, how to tune into their own psychic abilities. So if they have a question, maybe you ask them, well, what do you feel? And then you'll work through them. Maybe you'll get some symbols and signs and be able to coordinate with them and, and how they're feeling and what they're seeing and help them understand that they're, they're also psychic. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, what, else, what other kind of things go down in your psychic readings? Oh, well, what it, what it is is that I read energy. So that's the way I also can feel the waves, is that I'm an energy reader. So I'm going to feel their energy. I'm going to tune into their energy that surrounds them. And then I'm going to um, be able to tune into where they are. And, their, you know, and many people have questions about their relationships. So I can tune into also their relationships and also, you know, see where those are headed. Um, I don't like to do that too much because uh, because there are, sometimes there's some resistance there. But um, I, I can I can tell I can show them the path that they could be on if they just mm-hmm. make a few different choices in their life, and I can see the path unfolding for them. Okay, I can see it right in front of me, and I can see where the path goes if they stay on the path they're currently on which is, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes dead in. So this way I can counsel them to go on another path by making a few different choices in their lives and then be added to happiness as opposed to being stuck in unhappiness. Exactly. And sometimes we just need somebody to help us read our own energy, you know, because when you get... When you get to a low threshold, you've got to get a little boost to get up out of the hole. And so if you're if you're listening out there and you're a gifted healer or if you're a gifted psychic, consider helping people get boosted up out of the hole. And as we begin to start seeing, um, other, having contact with um, what we call dead people or people that have passed on, moved on, if you're one who can see people and they have, they'd like to, you know, give messages, you might, you know, consider learning how to do what Diane does. So thank you so much, Diane Canfield, www.diannecanfield.com. You have a wonderful rest of the evening. And again, as always, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. Okay. Good night. Good night. All right, everybody, that was um, a lovely show, and I'm letting everyone uh, go early. I feel like early class dismissal tonight, and um, I hope you can take this energy with you in that uh, both of the um, the ladies, myself and Diane and um, her guides and my guides and everyone that's here, I hope you can take our energy vibration with you and uh, – You can feel my love towards everyone that's listening live and on the recording. I especially want to give a special shout out tonight to Gemini Moon, who um, joins me in the chat room, and uh, and Kelly Zop and um, Daryl Berry was with us tonight, uh, who was on on the show previously. Thank you so much for joining joining us, and uh, you know holding this space and just giving, showing your love and appreciation by being there. I really, really appreciate it. Um, Dream master. Um, just going to scroll down here. Thank you to Greg uh, for, for being here with me and uh, Will and Roses and knee Reed and Jeannie real and in essence and uh, heart me 
And so some really interesting names and Gwen, Gwen Du Poo. <laughs> so um, thank you guys uh, for, for being here. And I hope that you're gaining information every show I have. And I do this for you guys. Good night. I love you. Thank mm-hmm. you.